Welcome to a tutorial on how to graph a cubic function on the TA-89 graphing calculator. The first step is to enter the function into the calculator. So with the calculator on, we press diamond F1 to get to the y equals screen. Let's enter h of x and y1. So let's press the up arrow, clear this old function, and enter the new function. So we have x raised to the power of 3 plus x raised to the power of 2 minus 17x plus 15. Let's press enter. Let's begin by graphing this using the standard window. To do this, we'll press zoom and then number six for zoom standard. If we already have the standard window, we could just press diamond F3 for graph. Now looking at the graph, notice how this window isn't too bad. We can see this relative minimum here, but what we can't see is a relative maximum somewhere up here. So let's adjust the window manually by increasing the Y maximum Notice how we can also increase the x minimum and decrease the x maximum. For the window, we press diamond F2. Let's change the x minimum to, let's say, negative 8, enter. The x max to positive 8, enter. Let's leave the x scale at 1. And now let's change the y minimum to, let's say, negative 20, enter. And let's change the y maximum to, let's say, positive 50, enter. Let's change the y scale to 10, enter. And now let's look at the graph again by pressing diamond F3. Notice now we have a much better view of the cubic function. But let's increase the y maximum just a little bit more. So I'm gonna go ahead and press diamond F2 for the window, scroll down to x maximum, and change this to 60. It is common to have to come back to the window more than one time to make adjustments. Let's graph the function again by pressing diamond F3. And now we have a nice view of the cubic function. If we were to graph this function by hand though, we would want to find the intercepts as well as the relative maximum and relative minimum. So let's also find these on the graphing calculator. Let's begin by determining the relative maximum and relative minimum. So let's press F5 for the math menu. We can determine the relative minimum by using option three and the relative maximum by using option four. Let's press three for minimum. And now let's determine this relative minimum here. It's asking for the lower bound, which means you want to place the cursor to the left of this relative minimum. So let's press the right arrow, let's say to here, press enter, press the right arrow for now it's asking for upper bound, so we need to move the cursor to the right of the relative minimum. Let's say here, and press enter. And notice how below we have the approximate coordinates of the relative minimum. It's approximately two comma negative seven. That's also determined the relative maximum, so we'll press F5, option four for maximum. Lower bound means move the cursor to the left of the relative minimum. So we'll press the left arrow. Let's say to here, enter. Upper bound means the right side of the relative maximum. Let's say here, enter. And we see the approximate coordinates of this relative maximum. Let's go ahead and press escape. And now let's determine where it crosses the horizontal or x-axis, which should be the horizontal intercepts. We do this using the zero feature under the math menu. So we'll press F5, option two for zero. Let's find the leftmost zero or horizontal intercept here. Again, the lower bound means move the cursor to the left, or in this case below the horizontal intercept. Let's say here, enter. Upper bound would be to the right of the horizontal intercept. Let's say here, enter. And then the horizontal intercept or x-intercept is the point negative five comma zero. Let's go ahead and find the next one. So we'll press F5 for math, number two for zero. Lower bound again would be to the left of this horizontal intercept here. So let's press the right arrow and scroll to the right. Notice how we're still to the left of this horizontal intercept. So we'll press enter. Upper bound would be to the right of this horizontal intercept. Let's say here, so we press enter, and the coordinates of this 
intercept is 1 comma 0. I'll let you go ahead and find this last horizontal intercept using the same process. Now if we still wanted additional points on this graph, we can use a table feature. To access the table feature, we press diamond F5. Before we start scrolling up and down the table though, let's press F2 for table set. Let's change the table start to zero, enter. Let's leave the change the table by ones, and we'll leave the independent option on automatic. So we'll go ahead and press enter. Going back to the table, now we can scroll up and down and select any convenient points that we want that we might want to plot in order to make a graph by hand. Notice when x is zero, the corresponding y value is 15. This would be the vertical intercept. So using all this information, we found many of the key components of this cubic function, and we should also be able to graph this by hand if needed. I hope you found this helpful.